what would you say are the sort of key fundamentals um, from your point of view when it comes to designing a, an effective strength and power program for, I guess, field-based team athletes, your rugby's and football coats? Sure. Um, I guess it sort of goes back to to my philosophy. Uh, I, I like to get the the structural fundamentals right. I think they're 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 very important. What does the the structural fundamentals mean? Because I'm sure a lot of people say it and throw it around. But what what it, what I'm talking about is the the basic push pull, the overhead press, the overhead pull, squat lunge, the hip hinge, your jumping, your landing, all your basic movement uh, competencies. Um, they're they're what we need to work on um, really to get that foundation of of strength and power. If we don't have that, it's like building your house on sand. From a medical point of view, do you mind um, going into a bit more detail in how that guides uh, your prescription? Is that looking like, is that like prehab exercises they do at the end of their strength and power program or is it how they, does it guide warm ups Like, yeah, accessory Look, lifts. Yeah, um, 100%. Yeah, um, I, I guess the, the screening, like I said, is just borrowed off what the VIS used to do with the physios and that was very comprehensive. The one I do is, is um, it's, it's a hamstring, um, hamstring test, uh, piriformis test, um, Thomas test for the hip flexor, QL, um, shoulder internal, external rotation and, um, calf. Just seeing what's happening with, um, with all of those. And that's just, that's just subjective, um, on a, on a five level scale. Um, obviously each sport that I've worked with has a different range that athletes need to, to be. What advice would you give around goal setting when it comes to your, your strength and power? Uh, do, is it um, is it best to have weekly targets, a daily target for that session, or is more, more bigger picture, monthly, sort of quarterly goals? Um, I, look, I really, it really depends where you are as an athlete, and it really depends on, uh, I guess, your if you're in a competition phase or if you're in a you know, off season phase, but, uh, I, I really think, I, I think, you know, I, I know I, I'm harping about it on, on this all day. It really comes back to what's most important now. And that hierarchy of things that you really need to, um, fix not only, and you should know that it's an athlete, you, you, um, even if you're, uh, you know, a park or even part-time amateur athlete, you should still know the things that you need to work on and get better on. And, and, and you should be able to, uh, convey that to your strength coach or can, you know, convey that to what, 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 what you're trying to achieve with your, um, your strength power program. From the physical point of view, how does sort of the psychological mental aspects, um, influence your, I guess, delivery for a session, perhaps maybe it's been, they've been uh, coming off a couple of hard losses, uh, or, or, uh, or even if there's been some longer meetings and you feel like the energy's down, is there anything differently that you've sort of used over the years to to help uh, engage the athletes when they're going through a bit of a challenging spot? Yeah. No, I, I, I really think that's a great question. Um, I, th- I really think it's an underutilized element of, um, of being a coach or being a strength and power performance coach. Um, it is a roller coaster. Team sports really are. And um, I think sometimes we can get caught up on that, on that roller coaster and, you know, it's, it's, it's just not, it's just not good for us. Um, and it's not good for the athletes to be, constantly either, you know, high or low. So, I mean, I really came to that conclusion after working a lot with rehab and, and, and found that the, the stages of grieving are pretty much the same as the, the stages in grief in uh, rehab. Uh, there's seven stages, you know, whether you're going through, um, you know, acceptance of, of, of the injury, common mistakes that you often find with, with, I guess, new draft picks that come to the club or. Uh, players that haven't had been exposed to uh, strength conditioning, you know, what are some sort of uh, important uh, aspects to to sort of grasp uh, early on in your career to sort of set yourself up with successful habits? Well, I guess is is don't be in a hurry to to get where, where you need to be. If if someone says you know for, for quality strength conditioning coach says it's going to take you know six to eight months of X Y Z, it really is going to take that much time. So don't feel the need um, and I've seen this happen many a time for athletes to go do their extra sessions on, on the side just to top up and then next thing you know they're coming in and oh you know 
my shoulder's hurting now, or you know, I think a little did a little bit too much plyometrics. It's like, well, just just put put faith in the process. Um, don't, don't put blind faith, obviously, in the process, but make sure that um, you you listen to what the, the the strength coach is saying.